Hello, my name is Mark Thompson and I'm a professor of digital economy at the University of Exeter Business School in the United Kingdom. I've spent uh, most of my working life either building and running uh, companies that uh, provide digital and automation uh, services and consulting to governments. Uh, also had some involvement in policy development for the UK government um, as well as my academic role. I perform a lot of research into cloud-based technologies and services um, and my speciality is, is public service. In this module I'm going to be talking about uh, cloud uh, platforms and emerging technologies and I think of these things as being very very closely linked together. I'm not a deep technologist myself, my specialism is in helping senior leaders to understand and relate to the opportunities and challenges presented by new and emerging technologies in the digital era and how they can harness these and use them to innovate as well as of course achieve uh, unheard of efficiencies within their businesses. So just to sort of start off a little bit, I often refer to some of Gartner's quotations and opinions and they're worth keeping track of. And here you can see this is kind of pretty much identified by Gartner, this is cloud, as the kind of centerpiece, if you like, of the new and emerging digital era. And in this uh, segment, we're going to try and explore pretty much what cloud is, just to, just to kind of uh, get all on, the same, all on the same place with this. So, of course, there are lots <coughs> of cloud service providers. AWS is just one of those, although it is um, uh, appropriate to call out AWS as effectively having invented the cloud model. Most people will be familiar with Amazon, uh, of course, started off as a bookstore uh, in the noughties. Um, and of course, um, it was Amazon's uh, storage and processing capability that it used to run the bookstores that gave rise to public cloud as we've come to recognize it now. Effectively what happened <coughs> is it was realized internally within Amazon that rather than uh, risking too many people logging into particular servers uh, serving regional Amazon departments at any one time, uh, the Obamacare uh, problems with the, with the launch of that particular service is a good example of what can happen when too many people log into a particular server. Amazon started using load balancing software to distribute an even demand for its services across its various servers. Having done that, of course, the great insight was that Amazon could now predict reasonably accurately what the demand was going to be at any one moment across its various server base. And because it could predict the demand, it could then, of course, also predict the additional spare capacity that it had on its servers. And if it could predict the spare capacity that it had on its servers, it could sell that capacity to other organizations who now no longer needed to build all of their own servers and functions themselves. And thus was born what is now an exploding and very, very fast evolving cloud uh, services market. To begin with, it was mainly about data, I'm sure all of you will remember that five or six years ago, uh, the discussion was about putting data on the cloud for various reasons. It might be efficiency, it might be cost savings, it might be to enable the various parts of your organization to share a common source of data. It might be for security reasons. Now, of course, those reasons still apply, but what we have now seen is an explosion of what some call emerging technologies, which are technology services that you don't have to build yourself that live inside the cloud themselves. Examples of that, and we're going to be looking at some examples in more detail as we go through this module, but of course we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're talking about robotic process automation, advanced analytics, geolocation services, optical character recognition, natural language processing, and a host of other similar exciting new technologies, including, for example, edge computing and Internet of Things, blockchain, that are starting to really change the way organizations think about their operations. So lots of suppliers, all of them increasingly uh, offering uh, a plethora of consumable, very, very powerful services that are available uh, on an almost metered basis to anybody 
who has the foresight and the initiative to use them. And of course, this emphatically includes government and public services. So what's starting to happen, as I've talked about, just moving within cloud away from just data storage to data storage and these powerful services that you can run your data through, all in the cloud, is that we're starting to see a standardization of common services in the cloud that increasingly organizations, in my opinion, would be crazy to try and build themselves rather than to consume. And in turn, that has started to shape the way in which the cloud market is evolving. So here are uh, three kind of steps, if you like, that we can think of the cloud market as evolving towards. The first step, uh, which we've certainly seen uh, for a few years now, is the basic cloud service. So if I want to consume uh, a vanilla uh, uh, basic cloud service, I can do that pretty cheaply, providing I'm happy to consume the standard service that everybody else wants to consume. If, however, I want to use some cloud-based services that have the highest security rating, for example, for a defense or, or security-related uh, um, uh, use case, then, of course, I can pay more uh, for my cloud services and consume services that are heavily customized uh, to my own requirements. Indeed, in the so-called private cloud, I can actually um, uh, provision and, uh, and put together my own very, very customized service within the broader cloud and operate it myself, if I like. But of course, the more that we customize services, the more we can expect to pay. Exactly the same as a suit. If I want a standard suit off the peg, I will find it considerably cheaper than going to a high-end tailor to have one made specially for my exact specifications. So that's the distributed cloud, uh, which is in existence already. Increasingly, as that has taken hold, of course, companies, organizations are starting to take advantage of the ubiquity of the cloud. The idea that the cloud is consumable anywhere, and that means that its data is consumable anywhere. That means that the powerful services that can perform heavy lifting in the back end of our operations in organizations are also consumable anywhere. And that, of course, is starting to affect how organizations are literally designing themselves in order to benefit from these cloud capabilities. And then finally, the kind of stage three that the more mature cloud market is beginning to get to uh, is called here, and I think usefully, intelligent composable business. Those of you that have had a look at the uh, local government um, uh, segments that I've been talking about will have heard me talk about the need to increasingly consume standardized building block capabilities and common service patterns that I can put together and just customize rather than building myself. And so what we're starting to see now are combinations of standard building block services that organizations in particular sectors find most useful as go-to building blocks to consume from the cloud. And as we start to develop this kind of building block, this kind of Lego brick thinking a little bit more, let's have a quick example, for example, of AWS's version. So, AWS has started to produce some consumable building blocks that are just common to most of its government uh, customers. And these are the sorts of building blocks that we can expect to see again and again and again in, in government services. Again, do try and view the local government module where I go through a lot of these services in more detail. Uh, Interestingly, this extends, of course, way beyond Amazon. So here is something I've definitely got my eye on at the moment. It's called GovStack, as you can see. And GovStack is a loose coalition of international organizations in government and public services who are increasingly realizing that the cloud offers an opportunity to start increasingly to standardize and identify common services at the back end of lots of government. And you can see them talking about building blocks here, very excitingly, starting to, to help different governments to identify their common building blocks that they can start to reuse again and again and again.
And let's take a look at some of the common building blocks which are starting to emerge in this exciting new model. Here we're seeing examples of this GovStack organisation identifying commonly consumed services everywhere and trying to build a common version of those. And we can see how common these are. Examples like authentication, information mediation, payments, security, and in progress, so this is in backlog, consent management, messaging, and forthcoming further down the line, analytics and business intelligence, artificial intelligence, AI, collaboration management, and other very, very commonly used functions that you can see that are used right across public administrations worldwide, but which could increasingly become centralized and consumed on a more commoditized basis. So that's a very interesting example, I think, of how the cloud market has matured, has brought together increasing products, both from individual suppliers as well as collectively and internationally around the increasing standardization and commoditization of common government building block functions. And as the cloud market starts to mature even further, we can start to see the increasing importance paid by cloud and platform organizations in the digital era. So this is uh, a list of organizations by global market capitalization. And you can see uh, the top nine or 10 or so are almost all digital era, digital native organizations, having increasingly displaced many legacy organizations that took decades and decades and sometimes over a century to build their value. So this is proof, if you like, of how many people across the world are increasingly turning to cloud-based organizations to consume a lot of that back-end function. So to summarize, as organizations increasingly start to standardize on common capabilities using the collective infrastructure of cloud-based utilities, and services, we can start to see some real business benefits starting to emerge. Organizations are not only using cloud-based technologies to collect data, often combined with mobile phones, of course, uh, to find out what people are up to and how to serve them better. They're using cloud-based technologies to collaborate better themselves, to come together around citizens, to manage connections between themselves and citizens even better resulting in joined up services. And finally, they're using uh, cloud-based intelligence utilities to optimize data much better as well. So here we're talking about advanced analytics and ways of even spotting patterns that are the sorts of questions that they should be asking themselves about what is happening in public services and how to design public services better to deal with the sorts of public issues that are starting to arise. Thanks very much.